Hi, this is Justin Taylor with Novell, here today with another Chalk Doc. So one of the other aspects of Enterprise Single Sign-On is how do users or customers deal with the problem around root access. Now what do I mean by root? Well, on a Unix box, a Linux server, things of that nature, there's an account called root. So how do they control access to that? Because if you think about it, that single account can control any aspect on that server. However, because of the fact of the way technology works, we need to be able to give some individuals access to that account. So how do we do it? Do we go out and simply give them the keys to the kingdom and say, here's the password? Or do we find some method to control that and to audit it? Well, today what we're going to talk about is another aspect of Enterprise Single Sign-On, which is referred to as privilege user management, sometimes referred to as super user privilege management, whatever the term might be. The key aspect is how do we control on a Unix or Linux server those particular accounts that have super privileges? So let's take a look at how we can use the whiteboard without any PowerPoint to make that happen. So first, let's understand what we're referring to. We want the user, or the customer, to be able to understand that we are referring to this root type of access. And what we're looking for in those particular customers is uh, maybe some metrics about this, how many servers do they have, things of that nature, because that scale is going to determine whether or not they're really going to be interested in this solution. If they have just a couple boxes, this really isn't an issue. But if they do have many servers distributed, which most enterprise class customers will, it's going to be a big issue of how they control that user account or similar type of accounts throughout their environment. And so again, what we want to do, just like we talked about in the enterprise single sign-on, is provide them a method from an enterprise level to control who can get access to what, uh, make it real simple for them, be able to put policies in place, but still allow them to do their job. So there's a couple key terms that we're going to need to know. One, we're going to have to understand that this root account, I don't want to give people access to it, meaning that I don't want them to actually have the login password. So if I set the password to uh, super, which by the way would be a horrible password to set it to, but if I did set it to some silly password like that and gave it out, what becomes the problem? Well now I don't know who did it because I gave it to 15, 16 different people. I can't track who did this particular function or did this particular item using that account. So instead what we want to do is not give it to them, but I want people through their own account. So we'll just call this person Justin. Why we're going to call him that is, well, it's my name. And we're going to not give him access. We're not going to give him the same rights as that. That would be a no-no because, again, that would be just basically causing yet another hole in the system. Instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow them to assume those super privileges. That's what we're going to do. Allow them to do it. But I'm going to do so in a way that will allow me to not only give them the access they need, but to be able to log what that user is doing. So I'm going to be able to put in who did it, where, when, and how. Be able to get all this information about it so that in the event that this person, Justin, because he does sound like a shady individual, if he was to come in and do something nefarious, something that he wasn't supposed to do, I now have a log of who it is. Now, will it actually prevent them from doing it? Well, in some cases, yes. We may be able to actually lock down what they can actually do with that account. And that's one of the key aspects of privileged user management, is not only being able to delegate this or allow them to assume those privileges for a period of time and to log it, but also lock down what they can do being one of the most important aspects of this. So instead of giving this huge account with all this power, I'm going to allow you to use it, but only for these narrow purposes. And to be able to do it across many different systems. So how exactly does this work? Well, let's take a look. So I'm going to be able to come in and on my particular servers or machines that I have, because again, they could actually be Linux workstations if you wanted to put it at that level. Um, I can go ahead and put on a agent. Now each box will have its own agent loaded on top of them. And over at an enterprise level, I'm going to have a server that's going to hold the configuration for the particular enterprise. And inside of that configuration, I'm going to put the privileged accounts such as root or other accounts that are equal. Plus, I'm going to have another column that's going to be able to describe the individuals who can assume them. And I'm going to create a simple relationship between them. Justin can assume root. Inside of here, I'll also put in the, let's say, uh, location restrictions, time restrictions, usage restrictions, 
I'm going to put all that information inside of the environment. It's going to make it very simple for them to control this access. So now when I go through and I log in, here's Justin, I'm going to log into this box because let's say I need to do something, uh, back up the database, uh, turn off a service, whatever the case might be. Once I log in, I will then go ahead and through the agent, which will capture this and make sure that I don't try to do something bad, uh, something I shouldn't be doing, it will go ahead and intercept this request to assume the root privileges. So on a Unix or Linux box, we typically refer to these as the SU, where I'm going to take on that special privilege now and assume that role. So instead of doing that, I'm going to use a different service. I'm going to use the version of it that comes with Privilege User Manager. And I'll now be able to authenticate to that box and based on these restrictions, be able to do the tasks that I need to do. Again, this is about reducing risk. That is the key word here. It's about risk and lowering the risk, as well as being able to prove compliance. Because proving compliance isn't a matter of just saying, yes, we've locked it down and everything's great. I have to be able to prove it through logs. And so this is one way that you could possibly explain privileged user management to your customers. Again, this is Justin Taylor with Novell, thanking you for taking the time to watch this and wishing you happy selling.